When last we left our heroes at Magic Rock, they were tripping over each other at their cramped brewery while trying to keep up with demand. We were brewing in a, basically an old mill, sort of very complicated floor plan, a bit of a rabbit warren. Life became very difficult for us. We maxed out production and then we were also trying to brew and package and it was three or four of us working in the same room. It was very hot, we were falling over each other. We had to plan out our jobs for the day and, and what we'd be doing over the week or the month. What a difference a year makes. Magic Rock set up shop in an old warehouse in the center of Huddersfield during the summer of 2015. We moved from a 25 hectoliter system to a 50 hectoliter system. We've expanded effectively, doubling our production. It's been a big move for us. We've managed to double in size, as well as give ourselves a lot more space for storage. Hopefully over the next six to 12 months, we'll be getting some 100 hectoliter fermenters, so we'll uh, be able to double brew. We're gonna start moving from uh, one brew a day, four times a week, to uh, two brews a day, four times a week, and so on and so forth. It's still an uh, all manual kit, so all the grain out from the mash tun is manual. Guys jump in with shovels, get it done pretty quickly. The same with cleaning the kettle and the hot back, it's all by hand. It's nice, it means it's not too complicated, there's less things to break, and if something does break, we can fix it ourselves rather than having to bring people in. And the real exciting thing is sort of our new canning line that we're getting, getting fired up and just on the point of commissioning. For the first time in Magic Rock's history, we're not tripping over ourselves. Great to see them be able to work uh, without having to bump into each other and sort of tackle each other. But as big as it is, we're already filling it up because we want to make more beer. We take what we do quite seriously and we like to work really hard and we're just starting to get the right amount of beer for that work. It's nice for us, it's refreshing that we're not just breaking our backs for a tiny amount of beer, we're actually we're getting a really decent volume now. I mean, it feels fantastic to actually have some space available to us now to grow into. And it's going to mean we can, you know, push on and, and start to supply some of the demand we've experienced. But the bigger brewery wasn't the only reason for the move. One of the main reasons for us moving down to the new site was so we could have an on-site tap room and people could come and uh, taste the beer at source. You know, we had a lot of people contacting us saying they were travelling, they'd like to come and see the setup and taste the beer, but we couldn't offer them that at all at the other place. We've got eight keg lines and two cask lines on at all times. We've got our barrel store on one side of it, caged off for brewer versus patron cage fights, in case you're interested. It has space for about 100 and 150 barrels in there and we get food trucks in and just have had huge success with that. Having a tap room does come with some issues. It can be a little bit dangerous, none of us were really used to having that so you know we've got to kind of be a bit careful and look after each other. <laughs> we all spend a great deal of time in the tap room itself. When we're on weekend checks we will stop in for a pint and then Kind of everybody just wanders in and wanders out as the weekend goes. So even though we work here all, all week, we tend to play here too, because it's a pretty nice to be, place to be. And just what made them pick the specific site? The new site was chosen because of its proximity to the train station, so people could come on public transport easily come and have a few beers and uh, leave without having to uh, get in their cars and drive home. We were now one of the top ranked places in the, in the area for people to go out in the, in the, at night. One thing we're often asked about Magic Rock is what are these things on their labels? The background in graphic design I had uh, meant that I wanted us to really focus on some good branding for the brewery as a whole and for the beers we do. 
Enter Richard Norgate. I met Rich actually on a mountain bike. Well, that's how we became friends. We, we rode bikes together. He'd done some good commercial work for bands and things like the Arctic Monkeys. You want the two things to come together. Obviously the thing that the people putting down their neck has to be the best it can be, but he wanted also the package, the look and the feel to be as good. First step, the logo. We kind of wanted the sort of the, the forward facing logo and the sort of brand to be quite clean and not too complicated because we knew that the secondary stage of the illustration style that was going to come, we knew that that was going to be quite, I suppose quite out there for the time really. And what was the secondary stage? Richard had these very stylized, impish characters and I wanted us to develop something like that for, for Magic Rock. With that, Magic Rock Sideshow was born. The whole circusy sideshow sort of uh, theme we have going on is a bit of a play on the word magic is all. It's not much more complicated than that. Rick started drawing little characters into the artwork. And he started with there was a bearded lady. So we've got a simpleton and dancing bear. The cannonball IPA and human cannonball IPA. Then there's high wire juggler, acrobat. Some are loosely based on people that we might have met. I know something is going to get called trapeze at some point. There'll be some that will have a character and some that, that won't. We don't sort of say that they always have to have a new character design. Imagine you've got a suitcase of all these little things inside and when you open it up they can become a label or a poster design or t-shirt. Some are there sometimes, some aren't, they're not all together, they can be on their own, you know, they can be part of this big crazy little group. They're a bit unusual, you know, I wanted something that people would like but they didn't really know why they liked and that's what I found in his artwork. Some of them have been adopted by the brewers, not that they are a representation of what they look like. Rich obviously being the owner is the ringmaster, so there's a chap, another production brewer named Scott who's known as the engine around the brewery and he's the strong man. Stuart's the, the bearded lady. I'm a, the sword swallower. I'm not sure quite how I ended up with that. Yeah, it's nice. It keeps things slightly playful, and it? it's also a little bit personal. It adds a nice touch to what we're doing. The guys making beer, you know, they experiment with flavours and stuff, and I suppose that's what I try to do with the brand, try to play with it a little bit and experiment and not be conventional, I suppose. And, uh, yeah, it's been really successful for us.